Good afternoon, everybody. How you guys doing? All right. Hello, MBA guys. Um, today we're going to talk to you about, or first of all, my name is Danny Bird. This is Casey Griffith. Sorry. Um, today we're going to tell you about our idea for a high altitude wind turbine. Up here you can see the general concept. Basically, you put some contraption up in the sky, you connect it down to the ground, and you generate power. Um, this isn't exactly a new idea. It's relatively new in the last couple of years, but um, as we, uh, um, anyway, I'm going to show you my mission statement apparently. <laughs> um, well, anyway, um, if you've been watching the news lately, they've been coming out with some stuff um, telling you um, some products about high altitude wind turbines, and we want to get in on that market, but we have a little bit of a twist. We want to make it more portable so that anybody can use it anywhere. Um, we're going to start out with our mission statement. Our mission statement is to provide a portable, reliable, and reu reusable energy solution for use outside of city infrastructure. This will give people, when they go outside, say the military, Peace Corps, people on boats, anywhere like that, what we want them to do is be able to launch our machine. It'll go up in the sky, generate power, and bring it back down so you can have power anywhere. Um, this is guided by one of my favorite quotes ever. It is, strive for perfection in everything that you do. Take the best that exists and make it better. When it does not exist, design it. This is by Sir Henry Royce. I, as an engineer, this is one of my favorite quotes. It just basically says, you're only limited by your creativity. You can do whatever you want. You just have to figure out how. Now, currently with portable energy, you have things up here, like we have the, um, this guy right here. It's basically a human power energy generator. You can crank it and charge up um, electricity and store it in batteries. Or you have gasoline-powered um, generators. Um, now, these, ha these are pluses and minuses. I mean, obviously, they're well-proven. You can use them anywhere. Um, but as you can see, you have to carry around fuel sources like fossil fuels, gasoline, things of that nature. Um, or sometimes you have to carry around battery packs and you can't charge them up. Or with the human-powered one, you have to sit there and crank it the whole time, which isn't really convenient. So it's, 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 it's there, it's well proven, but we want to find a better way. Um, another thing, generators like this, if you've ever been around one, you know that they're noisy. They, make a, they, uh, they cause a lot of attention, they draw your, your ear and they just distract people. They're non-renewable, they create greenhouse gases, which is of course something that's very bad these days. Um, want to talk about this one? Sure. What we're trying to capture is a certain thing called uh, the wind profile. Like on the ground level, you have a certain wind speed, and as you increase in elevation, that wind speed greatly increases. So by launching our wind turbine in the upper atmosphere, we're hoping to capture that wind. You can see right here how much of an increase it is. At 120 meters, it's very low. Uh, the average power density per, uh, you know, area of wind, relatively low. As you increase to 600 meters, it skyrockets. So we're definitely trying to market on that. Currently, wind turbines only are about, you know, 100 meters tall, the biggest ones. That's not good. We can get higher than that. Um, really, what we're trying to do is market to two different places, civilian uh, needs and the military. You can see right now, civilian use, disaster relief. Um, you know, hurricanes hit somewhere, they lose power, they need immediate energy. You can send one of these units up and have a power source. Um, backwoods hunting and camping, if you're off the grid, any places like that, and also marine use. If you're on a boat in the middle of the ocean, you don't have very many resources, so if you launch this uh, device up, you have immediate power. Also, that's great for the military. The military can use this on squad deployments in Iraq and Afghanistan, or if they have to go to remote islands um, or desert locations, and also for recon teams. It's a rap assembly thing. What we're trying to market is almost like a cargo box, and you uh, open it up, press a button or two, and this device expands and starts sailing, and you have immediate power. Um, the great thing about it, it goes so high up, it's very low noise. You're not going to hear it on the ground level. And also, we can camouflage it. So we can definitely market it right to the military for that. Um, if you look at like the amount of money spent on certain things with each industry, there's a huge profitability margin. If you look at military alone, they spend trillions of dollars a year. Out of that, 20.9 billion is related to energy uh, for the Department of Defense. So that's like, you know, troops in Afghanistan and Iraq. 
Um, research and development also is huge with them. So an idea like this where they can see some type of way to save money and energy costs with like uh, gas power generators, they're definitely going to take advantage of. With civilian use, already the Haiti relief effort, $1.4 billion was spent. A large portion of that could be for generating uh, power, um, you know, to run different medical devices and what have you. Camping industry as well, multi-billion dollars in the, indus or the U.S. alone, same with boating and commercial fishing. If you talk worldwide, if every continent had this marketed to it, you're talking about trillions of dollars. Um, All right, just a minute ago, I was telling you about how we, um, how this is a current market, and there is things in to be developed. So this is a couple of our competitors. If you saw the news a couple of days, it was about a week ago. This is a uh, Joby Energy down in Santa Cruz. They have this thing, looks like a flying ladder, um, and the way this works. It has what's called motor generators. So each of these little propellers, if you can see them, they each have little generators on them. Or well, they first double it, start as a motor, and they put electricity into it, fly it up into the air, and then they're able to turn it into a, um, a generator as it flies around. Which, which um, a couple of them will be, uh, a couple of the propellers will be on, and it'll and it'll it'll act as a propeller and it spins it around, whereas the other ones are dragging and spinning and creating electricity. Um, now, obviously, the problem with this one is you're trying to create power, but it takes power to make power, apparently. And in a mobile solution, that's not really going to work. Overall, their net gain might be pretty good, but it's not what we want to do. Second of all, we have this guy over here by Magnin Power. Um, and the scale of this thing is actually quite huge. It's about, it's about 30 feet in diameter and about si uh, approximately 60 feet long. So that's pretty big. It's filled with helium. And what it does is it rises up, and the wind catches in these little ribs here, and it spins around and generates power and sends it back down. That's pretty cool. It's a little bit more, um, you know, it's, it's, it's more, it, it, you know, you send it up, it generates power where it, without having to put anything into it. Uh, on the other hand, that's a lot of helium. There's a lot of helium in there. And also, if you check out all these little guy wires, there's a lot of wires coming off. It's not very handy. It's very stationary. So... Is this you? Well, yeah, when we're talking about problem needs, um, what we're looking to do with ours, again, is mobility. The main thing we're trying to do is make approximately a one kilowatt turbine, which will provide enough energy to power um, several life-saving devices, several laptop computers, network communications, recharging stations. It's enough energy. Um, easy deployment, transportability, we're looking again for a very compact design easy, and also we're trying to make a kit-based um, approach to this, meaning like it shouldn't be a complicated thing. The average person buying this product for home use or recreational to use should be able to open it up, easily assemble it, um, as well as for the military. It shouldn't be cumbersome in the least bit. Um, design goals, minimum helium use, as Danny said. The Magan, it's great, it captures a ton of wind, but it also wastes a lot of helium. So when we go into our design concepts in a second, you'll see how we're trying to avoid that. Um, one way we do it is for airfoils, which you again will see, and lightweight material selections. Sure, this is one of our original concept designs. We first start, one started, um, we actually started this design before we saw the other helium powered one, but you know, there's only so many different ways of lift, and our first one, the easiest one, was, was also helium. We put a, uh, you know, a dirigible up in the air, we strap a, uh, we strap a turbine onto it, put it up there, and let it, let it generate power. Now again, we come into that same, if you see one of our original estimates, 10 by 30 feet. That's a lot of helium. It's, it started us in the right direction, but as we said in the, at the beginning, there's room for improvement. So, oh, this is, yeah, this was one of our first ideas, too. It was um, basically, we have a dirigible, we strap this onto it. Uh, the next one, please. Um, so then we came up with this one. We wanted to look into uh, more of a hybrid way of generating lift. So we still want to use helium, but what we did this time is we took out the middle. Instead of having it strapped to the bottom, we wanted to put it in the middle. This will this will reduce... Um, this will reduce more uh, infrastructure inside of it so we don't have to have as much of a skeleton. Well, actually, we're trying to uh, avoid having as much skeleton as possible to reduce the weight. But having this inside will uh, keep it a lot more stable in the air. But then also what we did was we added wings to it. We figured, we, uh, why just use helium? 
we could get it to a certain height, and then we can use the um, we can use the wings after that. The breakthrough on this was actually we realized that on the ground we're not carrying the cable, which is actually the heaviest part of our whole system. Because if we're going 2,000 feet in the air, approximately, um, that's 2,000 feet of cable. That's, that weighs a lot more than the, than the mylar and the other, other materials that we want to put on this. So that's the problem. But that's also the breakthrough, because on the ground, all the cable is supported by the ground. You go up a foot, you're only carrying a foot of, um, you're only carrying a foot of cable. Can you show me the next slide? This is what I wanted to show you. This is our, our two-phase system. So from here, for, from some height, we haven't worked out the full numbers yet. We've only been working on this for a couple of weeks now. But we want to get it up, up this high, some, some phase one lift with buoyancy. We want to have enough helium to get it up to a certain amount of height to where those winds that we showed you the maps earlier, the, the airfoils that are, that are on here will actually start generating lift and it'll bring it up higher. So that way we have a hybrid lift system. Now we also want to, um, we also want to work with a collaborator who works in, um, he works in Henderson and he created this guy up here. It's called a ducted air wind turbine or a wind tamer is what he calls it because it, it tames the wind. Now what we want to do is if you noticed earlier, can you go back one slide please? Actually two slides. Um, if you notice here we had, see how it, it comes in, it's tapered. Now that's, that's because if you remember Bernoulli's equation, as, as, as um, uh, volume decreases and the pressure decreases, the velocity increases. So by having a scoop at the beginning is what we call it, the air will end this, the speed will increase as it goes through, um, spinning it faster. This is what this guy's doing. So we figured what, now you see this big rig and you're wondering how we're going to get that in the air. Well, first of all, we don't need this at all because it's going to be supported, it's going to be in the air. Second of all, this can be, this, uh, the duct can be built into our machine, so we don't have to have that. All we need is this little system right here, and we can work, we're, we're working with him, we're communicating, we want to try to slim it down, use some carbon fiber elements, get it as light as possible. Now, you can, as you can see here, this is a graph that he made, this is out of his, his own data, where you can see, I'm not sure if you can read this, but the blue line is an unducted rotor, so that's typically what you'd get out of a of a, out of a turbine of this size. Now, the, um, the BETS, um, the red line stands for, is, is the BETS criterion, and what that says is it's, it's, a, it's a criterion that says you're only allowed, quote unquote, to get 59.3% energy out of a certain amount of, of wind speed, um, with wind speed at the bottom and power being up at the top. The green line is his actual empirical data. That's what he's getting. So as you can see, it's above this, quote unquote, theoretical threshold. The black line is uh, the wind power. That's just a measure of, of how, how fast it's going per unit area. So what we want to do is work with this guy. We don't want to develop a turbine. We want to use his turbine, we want to f and we want to put it in the sky. Now here's our timeline. This is what we're going for. By the end of this week, we want to be able to determine the material that we're going to make this out of. We want it as light and as strong as possible. We want to be able to create airfoils out of it so that we can get lift. We're leaning towards mylar. We've been looking at that. It's, it's what they, they landed on the moon with mylar, so why can't we use it, right? Um, and we're going to tie up the details with uh, Mr. Jerry Broker, who was on the previous slide. By the end of this month, we want to have a computer model. We're going to build it in SolidWorks. We're going to put it into ComSol and um, uh, Java. What was the other program? Java Foil. It's a free program online that you can use to evaluate lift and drag with airfoils. Um, and then we want to build an actual wing model out of, the, out of the mylar and put it in the wind tunnel that we have here. And the reason for that is because we want to see how an, how an airfoil will perform underneath wind speeds. If it'll, if, if, because, you know, if, I mean, basically what you're talking about is a balloon here, but we want to be able to inflate it to a certain point where it's not going to deform enough and it'll still create lift. That's what we're going to do this month. By the end of this semester, we're going to optimize it. We're going to figure out exactly how much helium versus lift we need to get it up there, how, much, uh, how high we can send it, and then we're going to build a scale model. So we're going to be able to build, you know, hopefully some sort of smaller device, be able to float it, um, and then we know actually how it behaves. Does anybody have any questions? All right, well, thank you for your time. Thanks, MBA guys. <laughs>